Hey, what's up, guys? We're back for now. Um, I'm here at a well-known grocery store, Los Angeles, California. And uh, just to point out, uh, we are live, so as with most things, uh, things can and do go wrong. So I'm gonna try this one more time, keep the stream going. Uh, if we do lose you, if I lose the stream, stay with me, I'll try and get it back. But anyway, what we're gonna do today is uh, I'm gonna bring you around the store with me. Whole Foods Market, one of the top grocery stores. I realize not everyone uh, might have a Whole Foods close to them, especially uh, based on their location. Typically they're in the US as well as uh, some places in, in Europe. But I'm gonna shop for basically my food prep, show you exactly what I buy, what I stay away from, and try and focus on foods that are kind of typical across grocery stores around the world. So we're not looking for specialized foods here. We're looking for the basics, chicken, eggs, carbohydrates, that kind of stuff. And before we really get started, I've been doing uh, these Facebook streams for uh, the past couple of weeks now. You guys have been great, asking your questions and uh, doing my best to answer. So as, uh, as we're walking around life here, let me just pull over here and uh, pull you in on what we're doing. So here, this is basically my, uh, my meal plan for the day, daily meal plan. Uh, I mentioned this in one of my other Facebook videos for uh, um, it's about 2,700 calories, 40% proteins, 40% carbs, and 20% fats. So it's about 270 grams of protein, 270 grams of carbs, 60 grams of fats. Uh, just to point out, a couple of you guys are posting questions. Uh, why am I not at Body Power? Uh, you know, I live and work here in the US, and whilst Body Power Expo is uh, very close to my heart, I've been going for a number of years, and it is one of my favorite expos. Uh, this year, we've just got too many things going on in Los Angeles to be able to fly over, bring the brand over. It just, some things don't work out. So, uh, for everyone who's there, big shout out to you. Um, you know, I'm from England. I love Body Power. I love the, the guys who set up the show there. Uh, everything from the people that come, the booths, and the, uh, the organizers and competitors there. So, good luck to all of you. Next year, we're definitely going to make it happen, but as of right now, um, the best I can do is come live with you from uh, California. So keep posting your questions. I'm gonna to get to them uh, as when I can and we'll kind of break down the, uh, the food groups that we need really into proteins, carbs, fats, fiber, water, that kind of stuff, liquids. And that's really how I shop. So while, uh, while we're building up viewers and uh, you guys are posting your questions, I wanna give you uh, information on how and what I shop for. So we've all been shopping. We all know kind of what we should be looking for and what we shouldn't be looking for. A couple of my tips when it comes to grocery shopping. First of all, don't go when you're hungry. We've all been there. Easy to walk around, start snacking or finding foods that we want and we're gonna buy and they're not really part of our um, optimal fitness diet, if you like. So first of all, make sure you're going when uh, you're not hungry. The second thing, make sure you have a plan. It uh, doesn't have to be a grocery list, it does help. And ideally you wanna shop for at least uh, three to four days. I try and shop for a week. I'm gonna show you how I do that as well, how much of what foods to buy. If you're interested more in uh, the meal plan, the actual um, ingredients, such as this, head over to my website, Rob Richards Fitness, uh, go to the nutrition tab, there's a pop-up window, just enter your email and you get automatically sent a, uh, a diet plan, just like this one, so you can follow it uh, meal for meal if you like and also see how to change your protein carbs and fats and your calorie intake based on your actual goal your macros so my second point is have some kind of list knowing exactly what you should be looking for therefore you can structure um, your shopping just like you do at the gym you go to the gym with kind of a workout in mind at least knowing which exercises and how long to do same thing with the grocery store and this applies whether it's your local grocery store or if you're traveling or you come to LA you go in and uh, you know what you need to get so that when you're back home you've got the right foods and everything that you need from condiments sauces to be able to cook with uh, coconut oil so it's not just foods that you eat but also uh, things that you would cook with so coconut oil instead of olive oil for example when you're cooking your eggs you might not look at that as part of your plan but it's a really great product to get from the store whilst cooking just the same as um, herbs or herbs in America, herbs, spices, different flavorings. We're gonna look at all of that today. So this whole live stream is gonna be about 20 minutes from now. 
and uh, in between each section, I'm going to stop and actually answer a couple of questions to the best I can. Normally, I'd answer a lot more questions. We'll do this back at home. Next one will be uh, Monday. I'll actually show you uh, cooking preparation of all of these foods. But I'll answer more questions then. Anyway, we're going to go through and get all the food items that we need to be able to basically prepare a, uh, a meal plan for an entire week. So the stream is all about shopping for those foods. My first point is, uh, I'm just gonna start with proteins. I group them into uh, my proteins, carbs, and fats. When I say that, a typical, um, typical food that is high in protein, but let's say carbohydrates or fats, so chicken, eggs, uh, cottage cheese, other meats, those kind of things. We're gonna move to the uh, front of the store. People are already looking at me um, weird, so I'm walking along, talking to the phone. But uh, uh, so we're at the beginning of the store here now. Typically, uh, fruits and veg. So this is what we're going to shop for first. When you walk in, it's usually you, you've got your bread and you've got your uh, your greens, your groceries, vegetables, and so on. So we're going to start with that and make sure that we get enough good greens, fiber, and everything going in our car. So uh, I'll just walk around and start uh, showing you exactly what I would buy. First, uh, I'll have to maneuver the car around. You can see behind me a lot of juices, prepackaged fruits as well. Prepackaged, they're okay if you're uh, short on time, but really, if, we're, if you're going to be optimizing your uh, your nutrition, your health plan, your fitness goals, do everything from scratch. It's going to take a little bit more time, but um, Really, you're going to save money by doing it from scratch and you're going to know exactly what's going to go in. Based on this meal plan, you'll be able to see exactly the amounts of food to get. So it's kind of easy just to double up for the week or you know, times by 10, knowing exactly how much uh, in terms of grams you need of brown rice, chicken, you can work out based on the, the serving size what you're buying. So I'm going to start with veg. We're going to buy everything fresh and raw. I'm just going to walk around and show you what I get. First of all, kale. Anything dark, green, leafy like that, kale, spinach, a uh, bunch of stuff over here, different lettuces, they're great for smoothies as well. A lot of greens up here, so. Broccoli's a big one. Green beans, so often I'll buy a bag of these. Normally uh, four or five big uh, florets of them whole bag of green beans, easy to steam, easy to uh, you know cook several up at once and you've got them there for the rest of the week, just keep them in the fridge um, and put them in with the rest of your meals. When it comes to uh, vegetables actually, I don't include many on this meal plan, mainly because um, it's, it's more of a fibrous food, so free food I look at it. So I'll include as much greens, vegetables, salads as I want within the meal not including them as part of uh, my macros, if you like. This doesn't count for things like potatoes, uh, but certainly anything green and leafy, I'll just uh, try and put as much in as I can for each of those meals. It also adds for bulk, roughage, and fiber. So definitely you want to get that in. You want to be getting about 30 grams of fiber uh, a day with that. Somebody comments in that there's a faulty wheel on the car. It's not a faulty wheel. It's just that the camera's on the side of the car. Every time I push around, you're gonna get some shaking. So it's either that or I'm walking around, and you're gonna get more. Okay, so first few things. Fiber, greens, we've got kale, we've got broccoli, we've got green beans. What else are we gonna get? Okay, other things like red peppers. These are great in eggs. They're great to add in with uh, tuna, with chicken and couscous. So. I get a couple of those. Fruits. See, behind me, grapefruit. I used to have a, a grapefruit and a coffee in the morning. Um, that was great for doing free cardio. Uh, apples, bananas, not so much. Not really because of the sugar content. I'll include them in uh, shakes and smoothies. Um, but you know, fruits are typically higher in sugar. That's not to say I'm saying don't have any, any fruits. Bananas, berries, definitely in oatmeal, in smoothies, post-workout as well. You see right behind me, this is, this is the danger zone for me. 
nuts, different nuts, granola up there, um, dried fruit. For me, this is um, not so much of a cheat meal, but when I want to indulge a little bit, this is where I come. I'm gonna show you the peanut butter machine too, because uh, first time I saw it when I came to America, it blew my mind uh, that I could make my own peanut butter and as much as I want. Okay, something else, let's go down here. We'll do this again and uh, try and get someone else to come around with the camera so it can be a little bit more steady. But uh, as of right now, you've only got me. Potatoes, yams, carbs. This is where we really load up as well. Okay, these. Sweet potato or yam. Uh, this one is a yam, I think. They differ from... Uh, we're getting past differ from these kind of potatoes. So you've got your kind of typical white baked potato, you've got your yam. These are the ones I have, typically lower, slightly lower in glo uh, glo uh, lower glycemic. You can microwave these, pierce the skin, microwave them. Uh, what I prefer to do is actually chop them up into about inch cubes and then basically parboil them uh, in a pan. I, I did this on one of my last videos, you can see on my playlist on Facebook. And that way it's really easy to measure the amount of uh, let me show you here for example. So in this meal, uh, one of my post-workouts, I've got uh, 130 grams of yam. So I measured that before cooking. I get a yam, chop it into small cubes, put that onto uh, scales, and when I've got 130 grams worth of those cubes, that's what I'll cook, and the outcome is what I have in my meal. So I'm always cooking my food um, raw before um, before cooking, because that will always change the weight a little bit as well. Onions, a little bit higher in uh, sugars actually. But onions go great as well in uh, eggs. I'll put them in uh, tuna, another chicken mixer. So I normally focus my meals on three of the main macros. So what, what's my protein? Where's my carbs coming from? Where am I getting my fats? And then, um, Vegetation, vegetables, greens, salads, even though they often have some form of sugar in uh, and some calories, it's often so little that it's not really going to affect, you know, I'm not having a, an entire onion, I'm having probably a half a handful, it's about 30 grams, so the amount of sugar within that onion isn't really going to change the macros of my meal, so focus on that. The proteins, carbs and fats within each meal, and then add some other vegetables, uh, fibers in, uh, just, if anything, to add a little bit more variety and flavor. Okay, something else we do here. Spinach, arugula, all of this kind of stuff. Lettuce, definitely worth buying fresh. Um, doesn't keep for that long, maybe three to four days, hence why I kind of go shopping every four days. Um, these are great for the either cold cuts of meat, so I'll have chicken with yams and then uh, make a salad with that mix it all up, add some uh, flaxseed oil in there which we'll get round to. But your shopping cart should be about half full of, um, of greens and fiber alone. Uh, nuts as well, we walked past there. Let me show you a little bit about nuts. Uh, okay, so nuts, they're a high caloric food. They've got obviously, um, you know, they're mainly a fat more than protein and carbs. I know some people might use almonds for the carbs or the protein, but if you look at the macros on the back, uh, you find some raw. It's a good idea to, uh, to get used to checking on here. So they typically tell you per serving, and I'll kind of base that on per 100 grams or knowing at least what I have on my meal plan here. So it's a good idea just to get used to, that's why I like to prepare my food. Therefore, I know how much of what food I'm having in my meal. When I'm looking at uh, nutrition packs like this, I can actually relate to uh, the fat content and carbs and so on. So, uh, a serving of raw almonds here, and the reason I say raw is because when you cook something, uh, you're actually um, turning the fats rancid. So, you're effectively destroying um, the molecular bonds, the structure, the nutritional qualities of anything raw. Even with foods like yams and things when you cook, you're basically destroying to a degree the nutrition. So eat as much as you can raw, fresh, organic. We'll talk about that in another video, but certainly with nuts, um, keep them raw. And if we look at back um, per serving, which is about 30 grams, 
protein six grams, carbohydrate six grams, so equal carbs and protein there, but total fat 14 grams up here. So definitely more fat than proteins and carbs, therefore I'd include almonds as uh, one of my fats. Bearing in mind that it's still gonna contribute a little bit to the protein and carbs. So when it comes to nuts, uh, get them raw, definitely. And it's easy to eat handfuls of them, but bearing in mind that's gonna definitely bump up your caloric intake and your fats. Even though you might be thinking it's getting protein from it, you have gotta keep in mind your overall quota for your meals, your protein, carbs, and fats all together. Uh, what else, dried fruit, typically stay away from it. This, this kind of stuff like kale, dried kale, it tastes great, considered a, a health food, but you know, try and fit, if you can fit that into your macros, especially if it's more of a, a post-workout or one of your snacks between the meals, that's okay, but I wouldn't look to that as an optimal health food, purely based on maximizing um, your protein, carbs, and fats. Uh, what else while we're in this aisle? These things here, hold on. Can't really show you too. I don't want to keep moving the camera on and off because that's really going to keep going. Medjool dates, great for. Uh, Great for post workout, very high glycemic. They rate higher on the glycemic level than, um, than table sugar. So, two or three of those post workout, you're going to be getting about 60 grams of sugar. And although some people look at it as uh, fruit sugar, uh, for me, protein shake, some medjool dates, it's my protein and carbs, simple sugars in straight away. All right, this is where I want to show you. Let's see if I can turn it around. There we go. For those of you in, uh, in the States and familiar with Whole Foods, this might not come as uh, anything new to you. Fresh ground peanut butter. For me, when I first came to America, <laughs> right when I was doing a Muscle Mania competition, uh, yeah, this, this nearly killed. I got people waiting for the peanut butter, so I better move. But basically, uh, grind your own peanut butter. It's already got peanuts in there. Actually, they, they weren't waiting, they were just looking at what I was doing. Okay. You know, what? let's get one of these. It's uh, it's incredible. Get some almond butter right here. And what we do is oh. really you can't get any fresher than this. on we go completely fresh almond butter we'll pick it up up at the end a little bit more expensive than the uh, pre-packaged but it's amazing uh, we're gonna keep walking around uh, meats can't pick it up over here it's all behind the counter but um, definitely chicken breast Stay away from the thighs, typically, our high fat content. Uh, I get some red meat here too, some fish. Two or three fillets normally. Um, at least a dozen or so chicken breasts. That gives me enough to be... Uh, uh, some of those because my girlfriend likes them, so I'll fix them up while I'm here. So we get the proteins. Uh, fish, chicken, some steaks, some like... Uh, I get a little bit of ribeye depending how much uh, your budget allows for, but um, uh, some ground eye steak is really good for that. Eggs, we've got people stocking up over there, but um, cottage cheese as well, it's a great. Cottage cheese bumps up, it's a protein food obviously, uh, goes well with eggs instead of adding in a whole bunch of egg whites. Also nighttime, if you have a look at my nighttime protein recipe, that's on my uh, video playlist on Facebook, but look. Cottage cheese, almond butter, add some casein in there, or just some regular protein. 
mix it up, a little bit of stevia, cinema. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, milk. Milk here. I'm not going to talk too much about milk. You know I'm not a big fan of milk. More about that later. Okay. Cereals. This is what a lot of people are asking about. You're going to get oats. Gluten free. The reason I get gluten free, not so much because of the whole health benefit going on, but I really do find that if I remove gluten from my diet, my lower abdomen tightens out a little bit more. So if you're a little bit cloudy around the lower abdomen, um, try going gluten free, especially when it comes to oats, um, grains, I typically remove them. Things like cereals, you know, this is uh, uh, anything like this. Anything manufactured, processed, meaning uh, not in its original form, uh, I tend to stay away from. Okay, what have we got here? A bunch more uh, peanut butter and almond butter there. We will go around. You can see a lot of the aisles that we're going down. There's not really too much here that uh, appeals to me. So crackers, soup, tin products, pasta over here. A lot of people ask if pasta is good for uh, a carb source. Have a look at the ingredients on the back. When, you, when you're having a, a food group that is typically a, a single uh, macro, if you like, like the yams, it's got some protein, it's got a little bit of fat, but it's a one ingredient food, much higher in carbohydrate. You start to look at um, pastas, which are of course are processed, manufactured, man-made. It's, it's less about the nutritional facts on the back with processed food, it's more about how the body absorbs, um, digests, and gets the nutrient from there. So it's a, it's a less quality. That's why I look at a lower quality. Ground rice, definitely. Uh, couscous. Um, quinoa over here, this is definitely a good one. Yeah, it's, it's somewhat manufactured, but the ingredients on the back, if you can see there, it's just quinoa. So it's a single ingredient food. It's also a complete protein. It contains all of the essential amino acids. So um, quinoa is a great carb source as well. A uh, couple of sources over here. Vinegar down here. These I use a lot of. We've got vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Great for adding over uh, vegetables as well. Pretty much no uh, calories there or any extra uh, macronutrients. Whole bunch of tuna down here. So I look for uh, albacore tuna. Things like this one. Get a few of those. People ask me about the mercury in there. It's, it's not like I'm eating tuna all day long, so I don't worry too much about that. But it's a great source of protein. It's easy. Um, it's relatively inexpensive compared to other things like um, uh, chicken and meat. And it's just uh, easier. Ten of these will give you the protein content you need for the day. Well, for a meal. Surprisingly enough, when it comes to condiments, uh, ketchup, I, I grew up on that stuff. Things like uh, mustard, you want to add to uh, chicken and so on. Uh, these are actually really clean. One, one teaspoon, uh, we're looking at no calories, like no carbs, a little bit of sodium in there. It's basically just, uh, this one's apple cider vinegar, water, mustard seed, sea salt, turmeric, uh, paprika, and spices. So, if you look for something like this and you want to change the flavor of your um, your meats, your chickens, your eggs. The mustard, especially if it's more of the natural organic kind, uh, it's a great thing to be able to add on to that. Okay, ground rice as well. Talking about carbohydrates, ground rice, that goes in there as well. So carbs, we've got things like, uh, we're back. We've got things like ground rice, quinoa, uh, couscous, a little bit more modified. Uh, what else? Got frozen foods over there. Stay away from frozen foods. Same as uh, same as all of these meats down here. Let me show you this too. Cheese. I like cheese. It's not optimal for you know. We're talking about optimizing your your fitness health. Cheese, not really. Dairy as well. I know I get the uh, cottage cheese, but for the most part, dairy. I stay away from eggs. I don't count them as dairy in that sense. 
anything like these. Basically anything, chips, crisps, puffs like that. It's all processed, manufactured. Let's turn around here. Now, even if they, even if they say gluten-free, whole wheat, heart healthy, organic, natural, those words don't mean they're good for you. They're just stating that they belong to a certain category. So, look, this this really comes down to if you want to optimize uh, your health, your goals for attaining that lean, chiseled physique. These are foods that every now and again, like I look at a, a cheat meal. That doesn't mean I'm going to go out and just have burgers and pizzas and I do every now and again I might break away from my diet from time to time especially if I'm not really focused on a competition or something like that and uh, you know have a have a sandwich or a bag of crisps or something like that it's not crazy but it's not something I'd necessarily shop for so it's another tip number four is I don't want someone commenting it's uh, Asda it's Whole Foods not Asda uh, more people asking about body power next year I mentioned at the beginning of the video I live work here in uh, Los Angeles, California. It was just as much as I wanted to come to Body Power to bring the whole team and crew over again. It's just uh, too much, too much going on over here. Uh, all right, chocolate. Follow me on Snapchat or some Instagram. I love chocolate. This is like this is like my cheap food here. Pretty much a whole bar. Dark chocolate. Uh, not the worst for you in terms of if you're going to eat candy. They say there's some nutritional uh, benefits to dark chocolate, but especially if it's a uh, cacao, so it's uh, it's not as sweet as milk chocolate. Again, every now and again, especially after a workout, um, big muscle group like legs or back, having a little bit of dark chocolate, almost you can fit it in and get away with um, with within your macros. Okay, we're around alcohol here too. A lot of people uh, are asking about alcohol. It's one of those things again. Is it gonna is it gonna assist you in your goal? No, but we've got to consider life as well. And so I drink uh, red wine every now and again. And if I am getting anything harder with uh, spirits, uh, keep it something like vodka, vodka and soda water, or vodka and a little bit of cranberry juice. You know, we're looking at now, can you still go out and drink, have a good time with friends and family, um, and still stick to more of a, a healthier diet? Yes, you can, it's like 80, 90%. You're still going to be able to see gains or an improvement in results with that rather than um, cutting it out completely or going crazy and drinking every other night. So, moderation when it comes to alcohol, but a little bit of red wine a couple of times a week or a glass every other day or a few days. Um, it's not going to hurt you too much, plus, it'll give you something to hold back and uh, uh, you know cut out when you start to see more of those results. Right, we're getting some dangerous territory now. Breads. All of the uh, pastas around here. Again, easy for convenience, not necessarily optimal if you're looking to uh, really dial in your physique and your condition. And you'll see a lot of these are all around the. Mm. This is what um, you've got to be smart when you come shopping because, especially all around the outer sections of the store near the uh, checkouts on the uh, outside sections of the, all of the aisles you know that's where they they try and get you with those purchases you got all of the the sugary drinks you got all of the, the specials on offer that's where they want to get you to spend your money plus they're not really the uh, the optimal health type foods so hence coming to the grocery store with a plan yeah, maybe it does have a, a wonky wheel. Let me head down here. Coming to the grocery store with a pan, with a cart like this, and actually being able to check off all of the lists. So just running through some of the food groups that we've got there. Egg whites, so we'd have, we walked past the eggs. Turkey, I mentioned that with the chicken, fish, some steak, turkey as well. Oats, the gluten-free. Raisins and a banana. We touched upon dried fruit as well, so a small amount of that in oatmeal bumps up the carbs, get a little bit of sugar to boost the um, metabolism in the morning. Banana, I mentioned that with the fruits. Moving down meal two, we've got chicken breast, yam, black seed oil. That's, that's the last thing that I want to take you guys on. Some of the stuff to cook with. 
around with uh, with adding in healthier fats. So when I'm talking about fats, fats aren't just things like nuts or uh, saturated fat in animal or fats from your nut butter. I'm talking about really optimizing your fats. So things like flaxseed oil, high in omega-3, really great source of essential fatty acids and just like protein is another good one. Big believer of these guys talking about optimizing your food so when we talk about a calorie or a protein or a fat all being the same they're not definitely different benefits they might fit within a particular group but all fats calories from fats are not the same so if you are again looking to optimize your health your uh, meal plan look for definitely get some omega-3 uh, essential fats in there as well balance it off with the natural fats you're gonna get in a lot of the animal products fats and nuts uh, avocados, other seeds that you might add. Um, and that, coconut oil as well. Great for MCT, medium chain triglycerides. I cook with that, uh, add it in some uh, shakes and smoothies sometimes. But uh, that's that's pretty much the uh, my whole shopping list here we've been through. Like I said, head over to Rob Rich's Fitness, click on the nutrition tab, you can see, um, get your own meal plan like that. And uh, we'll get a lot of this food back in the kitchen. I'll start to cook live and we can answer more of your questions. Speaking of which, I've got a few minutes left, so um, I'm just gonna answer any questions that I see. Uh, Eric Napier asking how do I use coconut oil? I use it to cook with. So if I'm cooking eggs, uh, it's it's the coconut, it's not the butter, it's the coconut oil. So it's in a we'll go find it, but I'm not familiar with this particular store, so it would be walking around a long time. But um, yeah, I use it in replace of olive oil or coconut oil, so a small teaspoon in a pan. Let it heat up, much better um, at dealing with the higher heat, so it's not gonna go rancid uh, like olive oil with the normal heat that you cook with, but really just to cook eggs with, and also you can cook chicken with it, and other um, turkey as well, turkey patties. Uh, someone asking about Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, Diet Sodas. Look, just because, it, like I mentioned earlier with, with the whole, it's natural, it's organic, or it's, it's gluten-free, if it's diet, that doesn't mean it's gonna be good or right for you. Still got a lot of chemicals, artificial ingredients in, uh, flavorings, basically everything that is not natural except some uh, water. So again, if you wanna drink it from time to time, okay, but I wouldn't include it as part of um, you know your optimized meal plan if you like. Anything diet, even these diet energy drinks and so on. From time to time, sure, but are they gonna be beneficial for you or healthy? I would say no. Okay, uh, someone asking if I use 10 grams of coconut oil, do I count that in my macros? Good question. If I'm cooking with it, no. Um, it's just, I just don't deal with it. So if I'm cooking with it, I don't uh, contribute it to my uh, meal pack. If, um, if I'm adding it into a shake or something like that, then I would, but yeah, not normally. Okay, uh, someone said stay away from, I said stay away from frozen foods. This is uh, Emilio Ramirez. What about frozen veggies? Yes, you're not, they're not gonna be as beneficial as getting them fresh, even though the uh, advertising for them says that it will be, is my opinion. Look, for economy, for price, for efficiency,